This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. It is 5 o'clock here on your Tuesday morning. Good morning to you. I'm Lauren Casey. And I'm Meredith Barrick. Here's what's making headlines on this January 28th. Police are asking for your help after a worker was shot and killed at a northeast side subway. What we know about the three suspects involved. And Fisher's police are using new technology to get a better look at your license plate, why they are setting up cameras, and how they say this will improve your safety. And people around the world continue to mourn after the death of Kobe Bryant, the emotional reaction from Pacer star Victor Oladipo and tributes help in Bryant's honor. But first, we need to get a check of your Storm Team 6 forecast. That's right, and Todd Clausen has been telling us if you liked yesterday, you'll probably like today <laughs> because it's a little bit of the same. Yeah, a lot of the same here in the <laughs> sense that we have the clouds. You do not need to have your sunglasses handy throughout the day today. Uh, but we're not expecting any precipitation. That's the good news. You can leave the umbrella home. You need the jacket this morning. And obviously through most of the winter, unless we get a real warm day here or there in your outdoor workout. That's good to go this morning with temperatures that aren't all that cold for this time of year. 28 in Crawfordsville. 31 right now in Bloomington, 33 is the current temperature in Muncie and to the north. We have a temperature of 30 in Kokomo and 31 in Peru. We also have a little bit of, of patchy fog in northern locations. It's not dense with visibilities up in that four or five mile range. It's a little lower as you work your way over towards the Richmond area. No issues from Indianapolis to the south. But since the temperatures are around freezing, could be a little bit of freezing fog up there. And what that means for you is there's the chance of an isolated slick spot out there on the roadways. And that's just about it. Some flurries to the north those really don't matter much in the forecast here for the day today otherwise just lots and lots of clouds from start to finish throughout the day today and with the clouds and that light northwesterly wind once again temperatures won't warm much at all we get up to about 35 degrees midday and then hold steady in the mid 30s throughout the evening hours the time now is 502 let's get you updated on the road with lauren all right todd thank you so much here is a live look right now at traffic you can see over here on the west side your drive time is seven minutes from state road 267 to I-465. Traffic there is moving along up to speed this morning. No issues to slow you down. Take another look at your drive times south side heading up State Road 37 from Fairview Road to I-465. It is nine minutes, so no issues there. Let's take a live look outside right now for your commute. Here's our in-dot traffic camera on the west side, I-465 at the Sam Jones Expressway. You can see traffic there is picking up, but everything is traveling up to speed. Police need your help this morning tracking down these suspects. Yeah, the people in these photos are suspects in a deadly shooting at a subway on the northeast side of our city. Our Alyssa Donovan is alive at IMPD headquarters this morning. And Alyssa, this is the second shooting at a subway restaurant this month. That's right, and this one ended with a death in this shooting. An employee was shot, which is why IMPD officers are work working diligently to figure out if these crimes are connected. Now, this shooting happened last night. Police tell us officers were called to the subway shop at 7401 North Shadeland Avenue just before 8 during business hours. On their way, they learned an employee had been shot. That man was pronounced dead at the scene. Now, we do not know at this time if the restaurant had customers or other employees inside, but when police were there, they were questioning witnesses. Now, police say there was some, some type of altercation inside of the restaurant before the employee was shot. That this is an absolutely inexcusable act of violence and that um, we will be using all of our resources to find the person or, or people who, who perpetrated this crime at this time. Now, police are looking for these three people. They were wearing all black and carrying black backpacks. Two of those people had on black masks. The third was wearing a leopard print face mask. Now, if you have any information that can help police figure out if these two shootings between this subway and the last one where there was a shooting and robbery are connected, or if you have any information or saw anything in that area last night, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers at 262 TIPS. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. Also new this morning, more details are being released following a double homicide at a West Side Strip Club early Monday morning. Police say an altercation between a man and a bouncer employed at the Pony happened before the shooting. 
The man was removed and got into his car before circling back and shooting at the bouncer. The bouncer returned fire and killed the man. The bouncer was also hit and was taken to the hospital where he later died. Detectives determined the bouncer was acting in self-defense and there are no other suspects in the case. We're learning more about what happened just before a dog attacked and killed an infant in Lafayette. Police say that it happened inside of a home on the 1900 block of Greenbush Street. That was on Saturday morning. Lafayette police say the baby's mother was at home when the pit bull mix began fighting with a beagle mix. The teenage brother separated the two and that's when police say the pit bull mix attacked the one month old Julian Connell. Officer shot the, and killed the dog in order to get to the baby. Medics rushed the infant to the hospital where he later died. Police are still investigating. A notice of appeal has been filed by a Fulton County woman convicted for killing three children while they were getting on a school bus. According to court records, Alyssa Shepard filed the notice January 17th. Her attorney told RTV6 that Shepard is appealing because they believe the crash is, quote, just an accident and not a crime. Shepard was convicted of three counts of reckless homicide and other charges in connection to the October of 2018 crash. She said in the trial she didn't see Olivia Stahl and her twin brothers Mason and Xavier Engel and the bus until it was too late. Shepard was sentenced to four years in prison, three years of probation and a 10 year driver's license suspension. At 506 camera is set to be installed along 96th Street. We'll be doing more than just video recording. They'll be scanning your license plate. The cameras will be set up near the former market store on 96th Street and Lantern Road. Before a fitness facility opens on that property, the mayor is requiring the business to buy four license plate reading cameras for the city. The scan information will go to Fisher's police, alerting officers to things like missing people, stolen cars, or wanted suspects. This helps us to know when someone's up here they may be less desirable, but it also helps us in case a crime is committed along 96th Street to follow up and use that technology to our advantage. Police say the information will not be used to track drivers every move. They say the cameras work the same way as license plate readers that are mounted in patrol cars. A new Senate bill would increase the penalty for hurting a law enforcement animal from a misdemeanor to a felony. That means people could face up to two and a half years in prison for such an offense. The bill would also increase the penalty for killing a law enforcement animal. This proposal comes about two months after a suspect shot and killed a Fisher's canine officer in the line of duty. Our law enforcement animals, they um, put their lives on the line uh, just like the police officers do each day. And we feel like people who intentionally um, inflict harm or uh, end up uh, killing a law enforcement animal should be punished um, in a way that appropriately um, reflects um, that type of harm. Members of the Humane Society of the United States helped push for this bill at the State House. More news from the State House. Former Indiana Speaker of the House Pat Bauer announced that he will not seek re-election. Bauer is currently serving as a representative for the South Bend District. He's the longest serving member of the Indiana House and is one of the country's longest serving state legislators. He spent 50 years in the General Assembly and served six years as Speaker. A campus march is planned at Ball State today as some students call for the University to make changes. The walkout was planned after this classroom incident. All right, you want to sit here or do you want to leave? Why am I moving in the middle of class? He legit stopped the class to try to move me. I've been back here on this PowerPoint. Are you being drunk in the class? No, I'm not doing no, that. No, no, no. The whole damn no, no, class is here. It's cool. It's cool. The whole you know what? Time. I'm going to leave. He's been on our work the whole time. The student who posted this video last week says a professor called police after a classmate would not move seats during class. Ball State released a statement saying it is reviewing what happened. The creators of an online petition want the professor to retire early and perform community service. They're also calling for conflict and sensitivity training for all faculty and a new campus funded student committee to advocate for student issues. It's 509 reaction continues to pour in this morning over the shocking news of NBA star Kobe Bryant's death, his daughters and seven others. They were killed in a helicopter crash out in California on Sunday. Governor Eric Holcomb shared his thoughts on the tragedy. What I was most impressed about Kobe Bryant was his willingness to reach out to others who might be struggling through some things that maybe he endured, maybe learned the hard way. You can tell, as if you listen to his words, you can tell that a lot of people were there to um, surround him and help him um, throughout his evolution as one of the greats and all the pressures and demands that come his way. Um, but he, he was 
constantly seeking to pay that back. Pacers star Victor Oladipo wrote a lengthy message to Kobe on Instagram saying in part, quote, we had a relationship and a growing friendship that had basically just started. But after the few times we talked, I sincerely felt like I had known you for years. Thank you for all the knowledge and the time you took to help me grow. I know your time was precious, but you still took the time to assist me and I will always be thankful for that, end quote. The Indianapolis 500 is only a few months away and the Motor Speedway is set to unveil another piece of this year's history historic race. Gainbridge ticket will show off the Indy 500 tickets today for the 2020 race. The ticket design will be unveiled with the help of reigning 500 champion and Team Penske driver Simon Pagano. It will be held at 11 this morning at the Indianapolis City Market on the North Mezzanine. And a lot of people will probably be out and about for lunch there today, Todd, because the weather really isn't that bad considering we're at the end of January. Yeah, you know, you can definitely walk there. You just need to have the jacket handy. It's Temperatures at that point will probably be in the mid 30s. And when you walk out the door this morning, it's really not that much colder than it will be at the lunch hour as we have lots of clouds around once again. And because of that cloud cover and a little bit of a northwesterly wind, our temperatures are going to hold pretty uniform right around 31, 32 degrees during the course of your morning drive. And here are the clouds across the entire state of Indiana. A few flurries and maybe a little bit of patchy fog here in northern locations. The flurries will not cause any issues out on the roadways and temperatures eventually today get into the mid 30s for everybody 34 in Kokomo as well as Noblesville 35 Greenwood 36 Bloomington so we're all pretty uniform due to that cloud cover little to no sunshine at all today we do have some brighter days ahead we'll share that with you coming up in your seven day planning forecast in just a few minutes Todd thank you it is the final day of opening arguments in the impeachment trial coming up how the president's lawyers are addressing new information on the Ukraine call in a former advisor's upcoming book and if you were a Affected by the Equifax data breach, you now have more time to file a claim. Still ahead, how you can take advantage of the new deadline. Days from 4.30 to 7. Today, the president's defense team will finish their opening arguments in the impeachment trial. At yesterday's session, Trump's lawyers addressed allegations in former National Security Advisor John Bolton's upcoming book. Bolton reportedly wrote that Trump directly told him to withhold military aid to Ukraine until they agreed to investigate the Bidens. Trump's lawyers said that even if that is true, quid pro quo is not a basis for abuse of power. They will present their final arguments this afternoon, and then senators have six 16 hours to submit questions. A vote on admitting witnesses and new documents in the trial is likely to happen later this week. A key witness took the stand Monday in the sexual assault trial of Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein. Former production assistant Miriam Haley testified about what she called an inappropriate encounter with Weinstein in France. She said she approached him about working on one of his productions and he used the opportunity to pursue her. Her testimony follows that of Soprano star Annabella Sciorra and actress Rosie Perez. 67-year-old Weinstein is facing five sexual assault charges as the trial continues. U.S. investigators say Britain's Prince Andrew has showed zero cooperation with them over his relationship with accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein. During an interview with BBC in November, Prince Andrew said he was willing to help law enforcement look into Epstein. As of Monday, U.S. prosecutors say that hasn't happened. Queen Elizabeth's son has been accused of having sex with underage girls at Epstein's homes. Prince Andrew has denied those allegations but says he regrets his friendship with Epstein. At 516, amid the coronavirus outbreak, Delta Airlines is waiving a fee for customers who want to change flights from China. Delta says it will waive change fees for people with tickets to Beijing or Shanghai. The tickets must have been purchased for travel dates up to February 29th. Delta says people can rebook flights through March 31st without the fee. Though customers may still have to pay the difference in fares. At 517, let's check in on our forecast back here at home with Todd. All right, more of the same in the forecast today and tomorrow. Honestly, is not going to be much different as the weather pattern has not changed one bit. The only real difference is this morning we are dealing with a little bit more in the way of what we'll call patchy fog uh, to the north, but temperatures remain steady and there's still kind of that damp feel when you walk out the door. We just have all this moisture trapped in uh, the atmosphere from the rain that we saw Friday, Saturday, and really this entire month has been 
been very wet for us and we haven't really had a great opportunity to dry out. Uh, so that's why we are dealing with a little bit of patchy fog here in northern locations. Gas City to Fairmount right along Interstate 69. Their visibilities have now dropped down to about two and a half miles. So that's an area we'll keep an eye on. Three miles in Florida as well as Frankfurt. A little lower as you work your way over into the Richmond area. Not an issue in Indianapolis. Again, it's not so much the visibility, say, if you're driving down the roadway. Uh, but since there is some moisture there and temperatures are near freezing, there could be a little bit of freezing fog out there. So be uh, aware of that as you make your way out the door here on this Tuesday morning now. 31 degrees, that's the current temperature in Indianapolis. West-northwest wind at 7 miles per hour. So again, today it's not so much the wind speed, which is fairly light. It's the wind direction that is the issue. And that west-northwest wind is going to keep these temperatures really from warming much at all. 30 in Greencastle, 31 in Bloomington, 29 is the current temperature in Richmond. A pair of 30s from Tipton up towards Peru as we work our way throughout the day today. Lots of clouds, very little warming. That damp feel continues throughout the afternoon hours as our high temperature gets up to right around 35 degrees and then 33 as we work our way into the 6 o'clock hour. The satellite radar picture, the only way you even know that this is in motion is there's a few flurries here in northern Indiana. Otherwise, we are just locked in with the clouds and across much of the Midwest, we are dealing with just cloudy skies. So no matter where you travel here, unless you're going way outside the state of Indiana, you're just going to have a cloudy day from start to finish. So those sunglasses, you can just kind of keep them in the console of the car or at home today because you will not need those. TrueCast shows a few breaks trying to develop across the area, but I don't think it's going to be able to overcome the moisture that we have out there throughout the day today. Now, tomorrow as we work our way throughout the day, we start off at 29 degrees with a few flurries that possible tomorrow morning. 33 degrees by the noon hour, slow warming once again tomorrow with the clouds in place, then eventually a high temperature of 37 degrees for your Wednesday going into Thursday. That is the best day of the week, uh, at least the work week, with the best chance of seeing some sunshine at 39 degrees. The best day in your seven-day planning forecast, though, is next week as we get to Monday with a high temperature of 54 degrees. The next storm system, Saturday into Sunday, looks very unorganized, but there could be a little bit of a wintry mix overnight Saturday into Sunday. Hey, Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Here is a live look right now at your commute through the downtown area, I-70 and I-65 here at the North Split. Traffic's moving along up to speed, as you can see, and it's starting to pick up a little bit at this hour. Let's plan out your drive heading into downtown from the east side. If you're traveling westbound on 70 from Vost Road to I-65, it's a 10-minute drive, no problems there. So let's take you up to the northeast side where traffic's picking up. You can see by all the headlights here on your screen, I-465 and Fall Creek Road. We'll continue to keep a close eye on your roads and interstates, and we'll keep you updated this morning. If the 2017 Equifax data breach impacted you, you have extra time to file a claim. The original deadline was January 22nd. You can still file a claim for any expenses you incur between now and January 2024 as a result of identity theft or fraud. Equifax has agreed to a settlement which includes up to $425 million to help victims. If you've already filed a claim, the settlement administrator will not send out any benefits until they've reviewed and validated claims and the court gives the okay. Landmarks across the country lit up overnight to pay tribute to Lakers star Kobe Bryant. The Empire State Building in New York City and the High Roller Ferris Wheel in Las Vegas both lit up in purple and yellow. Chicago also honoring Bryant by lighting up the United Center in Lakers colors and displaying his image on video boards. Fans from across the world also set up memorials, those in Italy mourning his loss since Bryant spent some years in elementary school there. The largest memorial still surrounds the Staples Center as fans grieve in Bryant's beloved Los Angeles. It is a classic children's toy, but one Indiana woman is using it to create art. After the break, a look at her masterpieces made with an Etch-a-Sketch. Get AspenDental.com or call today. Welcome back. It is 525 on your Tuesday, and here's a live look over on the Near East Side, I-70 at Rural Street and Keystone Avenue. Traffic's picking up both eastbound and westbound. No crashes on the roads right now to slow you down. The Etch-a-Sketch is a classic childhood toy, and while many of us spent hours just trying to use it to draw simple shapes, an Indiana artist is taking it to the next level. Carrie Johns lives in Floyd's Knob and can create just about anything on the old toy. She started as a kid and has since drawn the column Coliseum, the greatest, and even a woman's first house. John says each drawing takes her about an hour or two to make, 
That's it? Wow. <laughs> but the hardest part isn't the drawing, she says. It's keeping the pictures intact for customers. The best way to do it is just to cut the whole thing open and um, dump out all of the powder. John says using an Etch-a-Sketch for her art is simple and relaxing. And a fun fact, the Etch-a-Sketch was invented in France in the 1950s and was originally called the Magic Screen. Huh. Can you imagine if someone just accidentally shook that while she was in the middle of one of those masterpieces? I mean, at least it only takes her an hour or I know, two, she that, said, that versus, you know, me. a week or two. But yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, that is, that is a talent that always, I am always so impressed it's by. like I can barely make a square. Uh, exactly. You know? <laughs> yeah, mine just looks like scribbles. I was like, eh, trying to like just retrace down the line, get yeah. to something. Oh, oh my goodness. That yeah. brings back childhood yeah. memories, that's mm -hmm. for sure. All right, outside right now, we're dealing with clouds once again and temperatures that aren't terrible for this time of morning. This time of year, temperatures are right around 30 degrees in most locations on average and will hold pretty steady through the 9 a.m. hour right at 30 degrees with cloudy skies and eventually this afternoon we'll go up a couple more degrees for your high to get to the 34 in Indy, about 36 in Bloomington, but no sunshine is expected in the forecast for today or tomorrow. But coming up in the next half hour in your seven-day planning forecast, we'll let you know when it does return to central Indiana. So stay with us. We're back in just a few minutes. American Heart Association and R2E6. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. We're following developing news on the city's northeast side where a subway worker was killed during an armed robbery. Our Alyssa Donovan is live this morning with the new information and pictures police want you to see. And today, IPS School Board is expected to address major changes in the district to its transportation department. We're taking a look at why hundreds of workers are now affected by the decision. But first, we need to check in on our weather. If you were satisfied with yesterday, good news, we're doing it again. Yes, and <laughs> we really can't complain. It is January. January, Todd, we're not talking about ice or a lot of snowfall, so we'll, we'll accept your forecast. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, thank you. Not much we can do about it. Todd, the it, weather bachelor, yes. we accept this forecast. <laughs> we'll take it. Uh, you know, I know everybody wants some sunshine. The sunshine always helps everything as it brightens uh, everything up. And I know people talk about seasonal depression. And yeah, we have the clouds in place today, but we're not going to be dealing with any bitter cold temperatures and we're not going to be dealing with any precipitation. That's the good news. So really all you need to do is grab the heavier jacket. You, of course, you can have uh, the hat and gloves if you get cold easily. Temperatures are sitting uh, right around the freezing mark. And we do have a little bit of patchy fog out there. It's actually the thickest here from Winchester over towards the Richmond area. And to the north where these visibilities are reduced just a little bit, that's where the temperatures are also hovering right around 30, 31 degrees. So it could be a little bit of freezing fog. What that means for you is the potential for maybe a slick spot or two on the roadways. And if you left your car outside, uh, there's probably going to be a pretty good layer of frost on it. Otherwise, just cloudy skies here this morning. There's a few flurries in northern Indiana drifting off Lake Michigan, but that will not cause any issues for you on your roads. Even if you're traveling up to the toll road or up Interstate 69, you should be just fine here throughout the day today. Otherwise, cloudy skies from start to finish with the clouds. Once again today, temperatures don't do a whole lot, getting up to only right around 35 degrees by 4 p.m. Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. Here is a live look right now at traffic over on the east side, I-70 at Rural Street and Keystone Avenue. Everything here is traveling smoothly. So let's take a look at your drive times if you're heading in from the northwest side. Southbound I-65 at this hour is moving along just fine. No crashes or delays from State Road 267 to I-70. It's just a 21-minute drive. Here's a live look right now at I-4 65. This is on the northeast side. Traffic is moving along up to speed, both northbound and southbound. Police are searching for suspects who walked into a subway on the northeast side of the city and shot an employee. That victim was killed, and now police need answers. Our Alyssa Donovan is live at IMPD headquarters this morning. Alyssa, police are calling on the community to help catch these three suspects. That's right, Meredith. Now, police are, of course, working diligently to find who is responsible for this deadly shooting that happened last night. They were able to pull some surveillance video and take some images from that. Take a look. They're looking for these three people who uh, walked into the subway at 7401 North Shadeland Avenue just before 8 last night. Police tell us there was some type of altercation and an employee was shot and killed. The three suspects were wearing all black and carrying black backpacks. Two of them also had on black face masks 
and one of them was wearing a leopard print face mask. Officers were not sure if they arrived on foot or in a vehicle. City County Councilor Ethan Evans arrived at the scene and he says council members are working to address the violence happening across the city. We are going to be focusing more on violent crime in general and we are going to be trying to tackle that just overall in the coming year. Now this is the second robbery attempt and shooting at a subway on the northeast side. Earlier this month, another subway employee was shot during a robbery. That happened at the subway on 38th Street, which is also on the northeast side. Now police are working to determine if these two shootings are connected. And if they are, they of course will let us know and keep an eye on that for us. And if you do have any information that can help them in this investigation, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 262 TIPS. Reporting live, Alyssa Donovan, RTV6. Alyssa, thank you. It is 534. Also developing at this hour, police in Lebanon are investigating a shooting that sent one man to the hospital. This happened just after 7 last night in the 800 block of Cohen Street in the Hoosier Estates neighborhood just off Lafayette Avenue. We're told when officers arrived, they found a male victim had been shot in the chest. He was taken to a local hospital and then transferred to a hospital in Indianapolis. Witnesses told police the situation started as a verbal argument between the victim and another man. That suspect has not been identified. Police are still trying to find him at this hour. Now to a story we've been following that could affect hundreds of Hoosier workers. The future of IPS transportation is expected to be discussed at a school board meeting later today. Last week we learned that for the first time the district will not operate its own transportation department. That means 135 staffers directly employed by IPS transportation will lose their jobs. And at least 550 people may lose their jobs when the district ends its current contract with Durham School Service services, which runs a large portion of the routes. We will continue following this story and bring you the latest developments. It's 535 covering the state house this morning. Indiana lawmakers are working on a bill that would address the skyrocketing costs of some life-saving medications. Senate Bill 421 would make epinephrine injections free for people under the age of 18. The makers of EpiPens faced major backlash back in 2016 after prices for a pack of two auto injectors rose to more than 600 the company has since introduced a generic version. The bill would also cap the total cost for a 30-day supply of insulin at $50. The cost of the four most popular types of insulin has tripled over the past decade. The average price for someone paying out of pocket is now $450 a month. I just did not know that it was as dangerous as it is. It was very, very tough. I wouldn't wish it on any parent ever. This morning, a family is sharing their story after their son was put on life support from vaping. A 17-year-old Avon High School student, Tyler Ware, and his family are now warning others about the dangers of vaping. Tyler says he first tried vaping his freshman year, but soon the now junior was vaping daily. Then one day, Tyler says he told his mom he couldn't breathe. They went to the hospital where he was diagnosed with double pneumonia, massive destruction, and fluid in his lungs. He spent 10 days in the hospital, seven of those on life support. The family says they hope to use their experience to serve as a warning to others. We learned a valuable lesson. Um, you know, I, I hate that he was the example, but I'm extremely proud that he's going to sit here in front of you all today and say I messed up. Everybody may be doing it. It's maybe the cool thing to do. It, at the end of the day, your health and your family is more important than, than just ending up in the hospital because at the end of the day, that, that could happen. Tyler says if you don't feel comfortable talking to a parent about vaping and the health issues you think it might be causing, go to a doctor. As for what was in the vape that might have caused this near-death experience, that remains under investigation. And a new initiative in Indiana is helping teens and young adults who want to quit vaping. It's called This Is Quitting. If you need help to stop vaping, text Indiana to 88709. You'll then receive tips on how to quit. If you enroll in this is quitting. You will get one support text per day for at least 60 days after your quit date. 
January 22nd is a day that Jennifer and Mario Malgoza will never forget. It's the day when their family was finally complete. And they say that's thanks to the Safe Haven Baby Box at Franciscan Help, uh, Health up in Hammond. The couple had been trying to adopt for more than a year without any success. They were then contacted about a baby who was in need of a home. Grace was the first Safe Haven baby in their area, so the process took a little bit of time. But after months of waiting, the trio officially became a family last week. There are currently 26 safe haven baby boxes in the state of Indiana with plans for several more to be installed. After more than a year spent recovering from a devastating injury, Victor Oladipo will, will return to the court for the Pacers tomorrow. On Monday, fans flocked to Bankers Life Fieldhouse to sign a welcome back Vic banner. I was so pleased when the Pacers got him. That was kind of a trade everybody thought, oh no, and then look where that's grown into. So. Victor, I uh, hope he can come back and uh, not say blend in because the team is really foreign right now, but I, I can't wait to see him with some of these other young players and uh, it's going to be exciting. If you didn't get a chance to sign the Welcome Back Vic banner yesterday, you'll have another chance today from 10 a.m. until 5 tonight. Again, Oladipo will return to game action for the Pacers Wednesday against the Chicago Bulls at Bankers Life Fieldhouse. All right, Todd, we can't call the forecast today a slam dunk, <laughs> but we're also not taking an L either. No, exactly, and it'll be a great place to be tomorrow evening. It's going to be really exciting, and the weather's going to be very similar to today and just kind of blah, so uh, Bankers Life will be a great place to be uh, as they host the Bulls tomorrow night. Let's talk about your hour-by-hour -hour forecast, and of course, you can always pull this up on the RTV6 app on your phone as well throughout the morning hours here. Cloudy straight down from 7 a.m. through the noon hour here are your temperatures. And notice they only slowly start to climb by the time we get to the noon hour, right on 34 degrees. Transition into the afternoon hours for you. More of the same, just cloudy skies. Temperatures will moderate to right around 35 degrees for your high temperature. No chance of any precipitation here through the day today. And then this evening, we are looking at more of the same cloudy skies as you work your way home from work. Temperatures still hovering just above the freezing mark. So not much changes here throughout the day today. As far as precipitation goes, it's a pretty quiet week for us. We're really dry until late Saturday. That's when we'll start to ramp up the rain chances. We'll talk more about the temperature trend for the rest of the week coming up in Maine weather in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. The White House downplaying claims that President Trump ordered former National Security Advisor John Bolton to withhold military aid from Ukraine. Straight ahead by lawyers for the president say that information still does not meet impeachment standards. And a popular DNA testing company is downsizing. Coming up, why the $1 billion corporation says it's losing customers and money. It's 540. We'll be right back. Bright Boost, Neutrogena. Welcome back. The time right now is 544. We're keeping a close eye on your commute. Here's a look on the northwest side. I-465 and West 56th Street. A live look from our in-dot traffic camera in the area. You can see traffic is picking up, traveling up to speed there this morning. No crashes to slow you down. As the world continues to mourn the loss of Kobe Bryant and his daughter Gigi, friends and family are remembering the seven people who died along with them. Ten children lost either a mother or a father in Sunday's helicopter crash. Three players on the eighth grade travel back basketball team founded by Kobe died as well. One of those killed is Christina Mauser. The 38 year old juggled three kids, managed her husband's band and coached girls basketball full time. The family says the loss is a difficult one for that entire community. It's, it's, it's huge. Yet so many families are affected. Uh, my brother lost his wife. My, my nieces and nep nephew lost their mom, but they're there's other families that lost their wife and their child. Uh, kids lost their mom and dad and sibling. It's, this is big. Authorities are still trying to recover the bodies of six of those victims. The cause of the crash remains under investigation. Meanwhile, Time Magazine will honor Kobe by featuring him on the cover. It shows the basketball legend from the back holding a ball and taking a final bow. The magazine hits newsstands Friday. And the University of Connecticut women's basketball team honored Brian's daughter Gigi Monday night. The team laid out a jersey and flowers in honor of the 13-year-old before their game against Team USA. Play Players also wore messages paying tribute to her on their sneakers. Gigi hoped to play for UConn one day. The team later tweeted out a picture of the jersey and flowers calling Gianna, quote, forever a husky. 
Here at 546, we want to take a turn to Washington now, where President Trump's attorneys will continue laying out their defense today. The team focusing on proving the charges against the president are outside of the range of impeachable offenses. Trump's attorneys waited until the end of the session to address allegations in former National Security Advisor John Bolton's upcoming book. In it, Bolton reportedly writes that Trump directly told him to withhold approved military aid to Ukraine until its president agreed to announce investigations into the Bidens. Democrats using this information to continue to push for witnesses, but the White House counsel dismissing the allegations saying quid pro quo is not a basis for abuse of power. Uh, I just think it's going to be enormously difficult to uh, rationalize why you can conduct a fair trial without witnesses and particularly one as central as this. Please understand what I'm arguing. Is that purely non-criminal conduct? including abuse of power and obstruction of Congress, are outside the range of impeachable offenses. That is the key argument I'm presenting today. After opening arguments wrap, senators have 16 hours to submit questions. A vote on admitting witnesses and new documents to the trial is likely to come Friday or Saturday. The Iowa caucus may be a week away, but yesterday the just as important caucus was held. Senator Elizabeth Warren's golden retriever Bailey did some campaigning on her behalf at Drake University. Bailey even held his own selfie line, just like his mom. Joined by Drake University's Griff the Bulldog, Bailey and Griff took selfies for 18 minutes, which is essentially two hours in dog time. The duo was rewarded for all their hard work with a puppuccino from Starbucks. Oh, very cute. All right, well, here at 547, Todd is checking in on our weather for our Tuesday. It's not a bad day for us, Meredith, going forward. Very similar to yesterday. The only difference is this morning, as you see, I have the visibility map up here. A little more in the way of some patchy fog out there. It's definitely not dense, and I always tell you, as long as the visibilities are up over one mile. You usually are okay on the roadways. And we've dipped down to just under two or three miles over in the Richmond area. We're at three miles in Gas City, as well as Flora and Frankfurt. So it's not so much the visibility that's the issue and why I'm showing you this map. It's because there's some moisture out there. And in these locations where there is a little bit of patchy fog, the temperatures are at or below freezing. And that means it could be in the form of a little bit of freezing fog. So there could be a layer of ice on your car out there and on some untreated roadways, especially bridges and overpasses, there could be a few slick spots, so be aware of that. 31 in Bloomington right now, 30 in Tipton, 31 from Greenfield to Indianapolis. Work our way a little further off towards the west, 30 in Terre Haute, as well as Greencastle. Throughout the day today, because of the clouds and the wind out of the northwest, our temperatures are really not going to do much at all throughout the day today. Now, the wind is not going to be all that strong, but it's the wind direction out of the northwest that'll keep these temperatures in the 30s throughout much of the day. Your noon hour temperature is 33 degrees. We get up to 35 for your 4 p.m. temperature and then slowly fall back down into the low 30s, working our way into the evening hours. So you can just kind of tuck the sunglasses away here for the day today. So we won't really need those. The clouds are in place. A few flurries in northern Indiana. That is just about it. Off to our west. More significant storm system a little further into the Wichita, Oklahoma City area. That will not impact us. It's a very quiet week of weather for us. True cast hour by hour shows you the clouds trying to break apart at times throughout the day today. They tried yesterday as well, but not successfully, and that'll be the case today as well. So it's just another cloud-filled day for us with temperatures that are fairly seasonable. Tomorrow, more of the same temperatures into the mid-30s. It's not until we work our way into Thursday that we start to see some improvement in the forecast, and the improvement is more in the way of some sunshine. It's not going to be a completely sunny day. There'll still be some clouds around, but at least uh, you will see the sunshine making an appearance. Friday, 41 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. And that is a warming trend that takes us all the way into the weekend. So Saturday, there could be a little bit of a wintry mix late once the temperature falls from 41 back closer to freezing overnight into Sunday. But look at Sunday, up to 46 degrees. And the best day that I have in your seven-day planning forecast is actually next week as the temperature gets up to 54 degrees, Lauren, on Monday with partly cloudy skies. All right, Todd, let's plan out your drive on this Tuesday. Let's take you down I-69, starting at State Road 13, heading to the I-465 ramps. A quick 13-minute drive, no delays. Set out over to the
the west side, I-465 and Rockville Road, a live picture from our in-dot traffic camera in that area. You can see all the headlights out that way. Traffic's picking up northbound and southbound. No crashes here to slow you down. At home DNA testing company 23andMe is cutting nearly 14% of its workforce. This is demand for genetic testing services decreases. The company's CEO says privacy concerns could be a possible factor. She said the tech industry needs to, quote, better communicate privacy standards to build trust. The company also pointed to fear of an economic downturn, possibly discouraging people from purchasing the $1 to $200 testing kits. The FDA is cracking down on one company for making false health claims, also telling consumers not to believe everything that you read online. In a letter to Gojo, the makers of Purell, the FDA ordered the company to stop making unproven claims. At issue, the Gojo's claim that Purell may kill the Ebola virus. The FDA says no hand sanitizers have been tested against Ebola. The letter also calls out the company for claiming Purell kills MRSA and other germs, and that it can reduce student absenteeism by 51%. If the FDA doesn't say that these claims are definitely untrue. Another Disney classic will be given new life. Coming up, how the studio plans to freshen up a beloved classic. We'll be right back. Other Cruncher chicken sandwiches. Get rallies delivered. Disney is going back into the vault, putting a new twist on an old classic. Variety reports Bambi is getting the remake treatment. The beloved 1942 animated feature will be brought to life with the same photorealistic computer animation used in last year's The Lion King. No word yet on when the film will be released or who will be tapped to voice the characters. Bambi joins an ever-growing list of Disney remakes that are in development, including Mulan, The Little Mermaid, and Pinocchio. Oh, that'll be a cute one. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Just yes. when you thought it couldn't get any cuter oh, with that <laughs> live, realistic kind of look to it. Yeah, yeah, that'll be good. All right, Todd, the animals probably uh, out in the forest this morning aren't needing to gather together because it's not that cold <laughs> yeah. out. Yeah, you know, it's definitely not a three dog night, that's for sure, <laughs> as we'll be dealing with temperatures here the next few hours that are going to hold steady right around freezing. But our normal low this time of year is 21 degrees, so we're 10 degrees above normal from our normal low, which you would think would be a great thing for our high temperatures temperature today. The problem is we're just not going to warm a whole lot throughout the day today, but radar is completely quiet. That is always a good thing when we're dealing with our morning commute. So this morning there could be a flurry or a little bit of patchy drizzle in far northern locations, but otherwise it's just lots of clouds and those temperatures going from where we are right now, right around 30 degrees, only up to 35 degrees for your afternoon high. So it's not a bright day for us, but not a bad day by time we get into here the latter week of uh, last week of January. In fact, it ends here later on this week. So as far as today goes, not bad day. We'll talk more about the future and look ahead to your seven-day planning forecast in just a little bit. All right, Todd, thanks so much. A number of, a growing number of employees are feeling isolated at work. Coming up in the next half hour, we take a look at how that's affecting their work performance and what experts say you can do to address that problem. And when you're looking for hotels, you might use companies like Trivago to compare prices. But are you really seeing the lowest prices? Our John Matteries tells us what you need to look for so you don't waste your money. We'll be right back.